truth and the truth will make you free. So when I was a young Christian, after I became a Christian, I said, Lord, there are so many churches here, all holding the Bible, born again churches, brethren, Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, many of them preaching the new birth, the different varieties of uh, Pentecostal, like different, you know, the different varieties of tea you get. There are different varieties of Pentecostal churches. You can pick your choice. And I said, which of these shall I go to? I tried this church, that church. I went to many churches. This is the verse that helped me. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free from what? Not free. I mean, in India, we were free from the British rule. It's not that type of freedom. It's, that's what these people said in verse 33. We are not enslaved to anybody. We are free. And Jesus said in verse 34, if you commit sin, you're not free. So what type of freedom is he talking about? Not independence of the country from other countries. Freedom from sin, verse 34. If you commit sin, you're a slave to sin. And when I say the truth will make you free, it means you'll be free from sin. Ah, then I could find out which church is speech, preaching the truth. I go to this church and listen to the preaching there. It didn't make me free from sin. There were gossipers, backbiters, and all types of people sitting there. And they made me like that. You go to another church and they're talking about something else. They're talking about Israel or talking about millennium and so many other things, but I'm still defeated by sin. Maybe what they're preaching is all right, but uh, another church I go, it's all psychology. You know, human psychology. And there are many Christian preachers who don't talk radically against sin. They just be nice to everybody and, you know, treat your cat nicely and your dog nicely and be nice to everyone and um, help people and help the widows and bring them along to church and do something good like that. Yeah, but I'm still defeated by sin. All these things are good. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be nice to your cat or dog. Go right ahead and do that. But if you're defeated by sin, brother, all that is no use. It's just psychology. I said, I want to go where, I, where I, the preaching makes me free from sin. That is the truth. That's, it's a narrow way. I agree that not, not many churches that do that. But I want to be in such churches all my life. The truth that will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, we go where we, we, we look for a church which will satisfy our need. Supposing you're greatly interested in music. You go to a church where the music is great. Especially if they got this, some special type of lights, I forget the names, strobe lights or something, all over the platform and uh, it's like these uh, rock musicians and they also stand like this they don't all stand in line one will be here one will be here one will be here with different instruments exactly like the way rock musicians have their um, programs and and some people like that they say we have wonderful time but they go home and they divorce their wives and it doesn't matter we go to this church pastor himself is probably divorced what all is going on today in the name of Christ and then some people like a very eloquent message which stirs them. Oh, what, what wonderful thoughts are. What, uh, some people like a pastor who's a joker, just makes fun all the time and laugh, makes them laugh from beginning to end. You need to find a church where you'll be free from sin. You shall know the truth. The truth will set you free from sin. So that's where I discovered. Now I know which church to join. They're all talking about the truth, but the real truth is that it will free me from sin, which challenges me to give up the smallest sin in my life. Don't you want to go to, don't you want to be treated by a doctor who hates disease 100%? I mean, if your child is sick, let's say, the love of a mother for a child is the greatest love there is in the world. I say that because God said it in Isaiah 49, 15. If a mother forgets her child, sucking child, then I'll forget you, but I won't. When God wanted to speak about his love, he did not take a, the, to Hollywood lovers. He talked about a mother loving his child. That's how God loves us. And take a mother's love for a child. Supposing your child has got 10 sicknesses. Would you be happy if eight of them are cured? Much better, 80% healthy. You'd still be concerned about the other 20%. Which mother will not be concerned? We want to be completely free of sickness in our children. What about sin? What about sin in your children? What about sin in your life? Do you take it lightly? I never want to take it lightly. 
I never, to me, the people in the church which I have responsibility for, they are my children. They're all my children. I don't want to see sin in their life. I don't want to scold them for it, but I want to show them how to escape it. There's a narrow way by which you can escape from sin. The devil may be this side and that side, but he can't touch you. Like I told you, those lions are chained. There's a way through them. Without sinning, you can go through. The truth will set you free. So that's the first thing I want you to see. Choose a church where the message will challenge you to be free from sin. You see, there are very few like that. Agreed. We had a great burden when the Lord opened this truth to us about being free from sin and 